All right, you're here. We're back in Final Fantasy IX, and here is the castle. Well, only the bottom half is upside down. You always have always will. You've been part of the party for a while. You haven't been working alone then. Hell, you weren't even working alone when we met you. Fine, go. I don't even want you to hear you douchey bearded asshole. Alright, he was actually part of my party, so I'm gonna have to choose somebody to replace him. Now, I haven't, unfortunately, been gearing my other characters. Dagger and Vivi, the only two that are geared appropriately. I set up Ico a little bit. Ico. And I spent a little bit of time level grinding. Uh, not level grinding, but ability grinding. In order to get my characters geared up a little, uh, set up a little bit better. Vivi, perhaps he doesn't have that, but, um... Still wearing the silk robes. Eh, ah, got really nothing. But my other characters spent a little bit of time running around and, um, grinding. Now, that's one of the unfortunate things about this game is, although we were pretty much beyond the point where uh, we should have felt the need to level grind characters, like since Final Fantasy VI, I'd say... They eliminated the need to actually grind, level grind your characters. One of the irritating things that they did in this game is, I like one of the mechanics that I actually enjoy, but it kind of has its own irritations, is the ability things that come with your armor. Uh, you're probably not going to be using your armor long enough to actually gain the abilities that they say you can get when you look at all this stuff. So you get a lot of things that I've had for a little while, like I was wearing a gold choker, I think. Or, or something like it. So I almost picked up armor po auto potion, but I wasn't using it long enough to actually get the ability, and I unequip it, and then I lose out on that ability, and it's... So I gotta spend some time running around killing things, not to get experience points and levels, but to get the ability points. Levels are just a little bit of a bonus when it comes to that. I think this stuff is a little bit more of a um, necessity. Because you'll get levels anyway. You're just not gonna... You'll get levels anyway, you just won't get the ability points. First fight. So, I mean, it's a, it's a minor gripe, but having to spend 20 minutes running around on a beach slaying monsters over and over again just to get some ability points so I don't lose out on powers. Like, oh, it also, it also tends to make my life a little bit miserable in the sense that I have to retain a lot of armor and weapons that I otherwise wouldn't because I'm afraid that if I go and I... Oh, this thing's friggin' high defense. I'm, I'm afraid that I'm going to end up selling something that I want to continue to use. And that's a pain in the ass. Like, ah, oh, shit, what did I, um... What did I just give up? Was that something that I really should have... 
been using? Should I should have I have kept that piece of armor? <sighs> I don't know. I got plenty of tents and shit like that, so it'll be all right. Use off some magic. There we go. That does damage. Good thing I brought Vivi along. It's dead. Picked up alert. Does that mean I can unequip some armor? <laughs> I didn't complete the all the grinding that I should have. Uh, wait, hold on. What alert? It was this one. Oh, that's just all the better. No abilities, but it's all the better. <laughs> Anything else I can equip to gain abilities I don't have. Auto float. I'm not really interested in that. Maybe at some point if I auto, if I level grind later on. This increases strength and all that. It's This is all stats. <laughs> Hello, Moogle. Hey, hey, give me this. Whatever this is, I want it. Cat's Claws. That sounds like an... That's a weapon. Not for a person who's in the party. Um, um. Oh, shit, what do we got here? Ah, I hate these bastards. I forget which one has high magic defense and which one has high, you know... Whatever. I think they both have high physical armor. Yep, he's high physical armor. Uh. Wonder if that worked. Oh, it missed. <laughs> Never really used any of this shit. <laughs> Alright, hit him with some magic. Yeah, that actually did some damage. Sweet. Well, that did nothing. There's a Moogle in the room. Burn through all your magic, who cares? That looks like she should damage more than one opponent. Oh, look. She's frozen. I guess it's a little bit unusual in the modern games to rely on a specific character which would be a... Oh, it's moving. Rely on a specific character to be the healer of the group. I mean, if you look at... Uh, I mean, not really long after this, say, Final Fantasy X, you had Yuna, who was pretty much the group's healer. Now, anybody could really pick up the healing abilities, but she is the one that you'd most definitely associate with being the white mage. 
but she could also do damage in the form of her um, do damage in the form of her summon abilities. And then, of course, if you took her down a different path, she could boost her damage dealing abilities directly from her from physical attacks or black magic or anything like that. Here, and it, oh yeah, in a lot of modern day games, I mean, you know where I'm going with that. I hope. Not that I'm just ranting nonsensical bullshit. Oh, it died with like 97 points of damage. But here I got um, Eco. She can do damage just like Yuna can with summoning abilities, but I, she's definitely, um, definitely. I'm mean, like I'm having her stand there and do nothing while the other characters are going and attacking, just waiting for an opportunity or requirement for her to start healing. It, it's kind of weird to think about it. Oh, accuracy plus. I guess maybe I can unequip something from him. To be honest, it's actually been a little bit of a struggle for me to get through this game. I, the, the production of this series has... Um, the uh, production of this series has taken me... At this point, it's it's like a year now I've been working on it. And it's because I can't really sit down and devote my time to it. Not because I, I don't have the time to do it. I've been playing other stuff. Not even making episodes of anything for this channel. But I can't find myself just wanting to do it in a, in a weird way. I don't want to give the impression that I don't like this game or I'm not enjoying this game. I definitely am. It's something that I have a lot of fond memories from back from when it was new, and I still think about it from time to time, and as I'm playing this game, I do feel like I am getting something out of it, enjoyment out of it. It's just, it, it hasn't really um, gripped me the way you would think a um, that the other games in the series have. I mean, to, to be fair, each one of the other ones, except for maybe ten, that I've done for this channel, I have had points in which I just, um, just not feeling it. You know, like, you know, I like this game, but I really don't want to play it right now. And that, but this one in particular has been especially troublesome with that. I just haven't felt the urge to play this. I think maybe it has something to do with, hmm, I hate, I hate to say it, Especially since I don't feel like I can really get the point across. But it feels like maybe I just missed the boat on this one a little bit. What I mean by that is that, I mean, I said that I had played this game when it first came out. That's a bit of a, um, exaggeration. I did, I did, um, I skipped this one for about... Well, it came out in 2000. I think it was probably about 2002 that I picked it up and bought it. And by then, I had a PlayStation 2, so... I never actually played this game on a PlayStation 1. Or I think I maybe I did just to... Just, like, screwing around once. But, um... This game came out for me at a different time. And I... It was probably the last... Pre um, packaged uh, shrink wrap PlayStation 1 game that I ever purchased. So for me, it was like I was playing a last gen game. Oh, what do you got here, bro? Well, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you don't know what to do. It was a last-gen game for me. Felt like I was taking a little bit of a step back, especially considering the art style. Oh, oh shit, here he is.
Okay, so I got a bunch of plates. Perfect. We need to get out of here. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Boss battle time. We flow to Terra. Now, Terra is, well, um, all we really know about Terra is Terra is where Kuja is from. We got Terra and Gaia, the planet we live on. That was both the names of Earth in, um, I guess, Latin and Greek. Do I have Mug? I don't have Mug. Alright, I'm going to try my stealing cycle here, but I'm not going to screw around with trying to um, just maintain the fight for as long as I can. I'm just going to kill this thing. Oh, an elixir got something right off the bat. Not something I wanted, but I got it. Terra is the planet that, um, or let's call it the world that Kuja has come from. He's a something something. I don't know what the fuck he is. But he's not human or, or whatever you want to call the people that live on Gaia. We haven't really seen much of a demonstration of what kind of power he's supposed to have. Oh, counterattack. Sweet. Nope. Very little in the way of damage you're doing there, bro. See what kind of damage lightning does. No, that's good. You get the impression that he's supposed to be a very powerful individual, but I'm not seeing anything in the way of a demonstration of what that power is. Now they they sort of it's like an implied kind of power that he has, because you see him riding the white dragon, assaulting the queen's position and doing a lot of damage and he runs around, certainly, confident in himself and what he can do and what he can achieve and all that kind of shit. But you're not seeing him, like, waving his hand and destroying cities or whatever. Somebody's trancing. Oh, Steiner. In that regard, I feel like he's kind of an underwhelming antagonist. There are two sides that I'm looking at him here. He's kind of... Oh, no damage. <laughs> 50 points of damage. Yay. He's kind of a good antagonist in the way that he's giving... He's being given a sort of human face to him. He spent his time when he was... Um, when he had Regent Sid's wife in captivity talking to her. Didn't run around and, like cackle maniacally and and um, or anything like that it doesn't sound like he really mistreated her in any way other than keeping her captive and all that shit <laughs> was that a miss <laughs> but on the other hand we don't really know much about his motivations other than trying to gain power you know so, he could be... We don't know what the hell he's up to. We don't know exactly why he's doing what he's doing. And... We don't really have a good idea of what his power actually is. Yeah, even a trance attack's not doing much damage to this fucking thing. I feel a little let down in regards to our antagonist here. <laughs> of course, everybody's going to want to compare him to... Uh, to Kefka and Sephiroth. I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't um, compare him to, say, um, the villains from Final Fantasy VIII, because they're kind of shallow. 
But, you know, uh... Maybe armor break will work. Running out of magic, bro. Running out of magic. Ooh, Comet. I didn't remember I had Comet. Oh, haste is worn off. But if you compare him to Sephiroth or Kefka, there are characters that you have a pretty good idea through majority of the game what their motivations are for. Kefka is pretty much to achieve power, and he's being motivated by his man. There's Sephiroth to... Well, you, you get the impression that he's trying to take back the world for the ancients, but it's not really the case. He's looking for power as well. Blah, blah, blah. Don't know what the hell Kuja's doing other than the whole power thing. What higher purpose does he have? I don't know. Ooh, nice. Got them abilities right there. Oh, well, beat the boss. I'm going to end the episode here at 23 minutes. Thanks for watching. Catch the next one.